Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I am your host, Jeremiah, and we're here this morning to talk about the Word of God. We've been talking about Romans chapter 8 for a little bit here. I believe this is uh, part 23. And there's so much in chapter 8 because it's like the middle stem of a balance, the middle arm of a balance when it comes to the righteousness of God and salvation. I mean, the book of Romans itself is the book of righteousness by faith. We are saved by faith and not by works, but we're going to go ahead and dive in. I'm going to start reading in verse 16 of chapter 8, and then we'll get into it. Here we go. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. Remember, the Christian life is, you know, that you're going to go through some trials and tribulation. If you, if you think you're not going to suffer, then you better be, better be prepared because things are going to happen. But if you've been a Christian for a while, you know that you've been going through in this life with sufferings. And we are co-heirs of that suffering with Christ because we also inherit the glory of Christ. The Bible tells, tells us that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now, we're going to keep on reading in verse 18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the Son of God. Now, here it is. Today's message. For, for the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. So the earth is mourn, is mourn, mourning, yeah, mourning and moaning <laughs> because it knows that it is not redeemed. It knows that the Messiah is coming. Do you know the earth knows this? Because how is the earth that is alive not going to know about the Creator? Because you see, the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. When I read this a long time ago, I started studying and that word groan is also before the burning bush as God appeared to Moses, the Bible tells us that God said he has surely heard the groans, the cry of his people, and that he came down to deliver them. But it was not yet time for the earth to be redeemed. Now notice he says, I heard the groans, the cry of my people. Folks, understand this. We've been subject to suffer with Christ. There's nothing that you and I can do about that. This world is vanity disappointing and misery. That's what vanity means, that he's subjected to misery. <laughs> you see, the people became vain by their own will. We all did. We did vain things when we were in the world. But when we came to Christ, Christ subject us to misery unwillingly, meaning he says, you're going to suffer. You can say, I don't want to suffer. He says, you're going to have to suffer because part of being in that co-heir with Christ here on earth is that we're going to go through just like the earth is waiting to be saved from its corruption. Aren't you waiting to be saved from this corrupted flesh, from this world that is corrupt in every sense of the word? Because why? Because of sin. But delivery, delivery, from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God will be when Christ comes back to take his people out of this mess. This refers to the renovation of the heavens and the earth by fire when creation will be rid of all bondage and corruption and made new for the eternal perfect state. 
This world is groaning. I can I can just imagine, like when you look out your window, or you're walking down the street and you see all the stuff that's happening, or you look at the news, all this stuff, you can see the world in a mess. However, you can also see that we are waiting for the deliverance from the corruption of this world. The world knows that it needs to be delivered and only the coming of the Messiah. Right now, it may have some relief because of the children of God. We are here. Do you know that God is withholding the entire judgment of the world because you and I are here, the church? Hallelujah to that. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, verse 10 through 13, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So seeing then, that all things, all of these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for the hasting unto the coming of the Lord our God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for the new heaven and the new earth wherein dwells righteousness. We know that although we're here and we're righteous in God, this is not the righteousness of God in its completeness because the world will be dissolved. This world is going to be gone and it's going to happen by a great noise and a fire, the judgment of God. Wow, a great noise. You can imagine, you've heard earthquakes before, you've seen them on TV, it's going to be a million times more than that. And here, the delivery that we have, because God, God is the one who is the beginning, who laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of his hands, he knows how to do it. You and I don't have the power to do that. But what about your world? What about you where you are right now? Do you see the corruption in your own life? I see it in my life. I see the corruption, the decay, the ruin, the, 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 the wickedness. Yeah, we have it inside of us. And that's why Christ came to deliver us from this by telling us you don't have to submit to the decay of sin, to the corruption of sin. You don't have to submit yourself to the ruins of this life because you are have come to the liberty that Christ has given you on the cross. Now think about this. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every high thing that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God. And then he says, Paul says, and we bring into captivity, we take every thought captive and take it to our captain of the host, Jesus Christ. He deals with that if we submit it to him. There are times when sin comes in your mind, that corruption is there. You have the power and the responsibility and the freedom to say, stop, thus far and no more. That's it, you're done. But sometimes, you know, we like to play with that. And yet we get, listen, we get entangled by the things of this world. And God says, turn from this, repent. But now this is what Paul says after he talks about the weapons of our warfare because we're in a war here against corruption, against all of these things. He says this, and we are ready to punish every act of disobedience once our obedience has been established. Wow. That means that you got to be the gatekeeper. Why? Because we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. We should not be Watch this now. It's not that we can't be happy in the world and enjoy things that God has given us, but there should be a deep groan, a deep cry in our spirit because we are in this world and we see the sin. The Bible tells us, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. But yet, he also says that 
God will bless. Blessed are those who are mourning, for they shall be comforted. We are mourning right now. We're mourning in this world. Although we got joy, we're mourning when we see the evil that's happening. Now, let me tell you about this groan he's talking about. It's a cry deep inside. It's a lament. When a person dies, you know, or you see something that's really horrible, you begin to lament. You begin to mourn. You begin to experience a calamity within you. But God says this. Blessed are you if you are this way because the day will come when you will be comforted. Blessed are the meek because they shall inherit the earth. You see, this earth is not happening. This is a garbage can compared to what's going on up there. And though it belongs to the Lord, it is not subject completely to his righteousness. The new world will be subject to God's righteousness because there will be no more sin. The groaning will be gone. We will have new bodies, new minds. You know, your mind, you won't even be able to conceive a thought of sin in your mind. Wow, what a day that's going to be. We're going to continue this because there's so much here. But I pray that you will be blessed and that you will continue to see God in the scriptures. That's why, please, study the scriptures. Don't negate the study of the scriptures. So study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman who is not going to be ashamed, but one who rightly divides, slices the word of truth. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And remember, although you're joyful in this world, there's a morning inside of you waiting for that glorious coming of the Lord to take us out so that we can be with Him in a world of righteousness, untainted. Until we meet again, shalom.